One cool thing about Kili Plasma is that it's really, really, really easy to adapt it to whatever workflow you're used to. In general, there are two major workflows, which is the more Windows-like one, where you have the desktop, you open up the apps, you minimize them, and then there's the one that's proposed by GNOME as an example, where you have multiple virtual desktops and you usually never actually minimize any window. Personally, as an example, I very much prefer having a lot of virtual desktops and never minimizing anything compared to having just like a couple and minimizing my apps, but that's just my personal preference. Usually I don't see too much stuff that goes further beyond these things, but there are some projects that are really interesting and one in particular uh, is from a GNO is a GNOME extension and I think that it if it was like possible to implement it slightly better, I would 100% switch to it. And it is so good that why I once replicated it in KD Plasma. So let's look at it. Obviously, I'm talking about Material Shell. I don't know if you know it. And the best way to uh, understand it, its concept is via this GIF. Now, uh, it proposes this speech, I'm never going to pronounce this, spe speech, Okay, never mind. This idea of having vertically your workspaces and horizontally your applications. And you have many workspaces that you, you categorize your applications in them, and then you horizontally switch between them. Let's actually see in practice how it looks. This is out of the box. It looks really pretty out of the box and it kind of makes sense. So at the top, horizontally, sorry about that, we have our applications and we can actually open up new application clicking on the plus button. As an example, let's open up, I don't know, text editor. Now we have text editor. Vertically on the left, we have our workspaces and we can make a new workspace. And of course we don't have any application open. So as an example, the terminal, and then we can switch vertically between the workspaces. And then in the same workspace, I can open up something else like, I don't know, the calendar. This is the calendar. I can switch horizontally and vertically. So it's a two by two, um, sorry, a two dimensional um, system. Uh, another couple of nice things is that you have a global type to search stuff, I guess for applications um, and settings, character, a lot of stuff, global search always um, on display, which I think is particularly useful. You have the system tray vertically on the bottom left, which I think is a very nice um, place to put this kind of things. And then we actually get to why this way is so powerful, this way of organizing your windows is so powerful. Because, okay, throughout workspaces, uh, to uh, make them together, there's not really much you can do. I mean, you can drag and drop them, just like you can drag and drop applications to rearrange them. That's not really where it's most powerful. Where it is powerful, it is within a single workspace, uh, the ability to actually manage all of your windows by this button, which again, very smartly is always shown. And just by clicking on it, you can decide how your windows should behave in this workspace. As an example, let's go with split. And we can actually select the number of columns that we want to split with. And I think two right now is fine. And you have highlighted what uh, you're currently using. If I switch to this one, this one becomes highlighted. And I can add further applications like another text editor which is going, yeah, yes, launch, please. Okay, no hurry, of course it crashed. What's up with that, okay? And it's going to be to the right, of course, of what we just opened. And it's actually specially consistent. We have get it, the calendar, and then files. And we can rearrange them just by drag and dropping like this. And if we think that we need more columns, we can just switch to three like this. And again, we can rearrange them as we'd like. And if we think that split isn't the best way, we also get half, which looks like this. And again, we can even uh, add more stuff. I think that's too much though. And if we don't, I think this styling system is very powerful. If we don't like it for any reason, we just can opt out uh, within this workspace and just use it, um, let's say normally. Of course it doesn't reside. <laughs> Other workspaces remain not affected by this. So you can have a workspace where you have just floating windows, a workspace where you have uh, split applications like this, a workspace where you have different tiling. I think it's really adaptive and this concept of wallpapers is um, better, I think, than the one of activities, which is really similar. 
you categorize your work within uh, this kind of activities workspaces why this works better i think that it's really really easy to make a new activity a new workspace just like this boom done really easy and the thing is uh, it also makes automatically an icon based on the first app or i think that you have active at that particular moment i think that's a very smart approach and whereas to make an activity in can I switch like this? Yes, it works. Okay, I can also drag and drop stuff. Very smart. And um, whereas making an activity in KD Plasma is much more complex, requires open settings, and switching between them is not an, as easy. And uh, in theory, it could be like I did some designs to add by default an applet that allows you to very quickly switch and create uh, between activities but um, there's no way with the current plasma layout to have these two dimensional uh, workspace kind of workspaces which i think is really smart you can just have an horizontal panel which is the bottom one where you have the list of activities and the list of applications and uh, that doesn't really give any spatial recognizing of what's happening whereas i think this is what really makes uh, this kind of this kind of um, workflow really powerful. There's one thing that uh, I don't quite like that I think really fails the concept, which is not a fault of this nice shell. That is, the theory goes that if you restart the system, all of the application should open again as they were in the same place. That's the theory. The issue is that it doesn't quite work, sadly. Uh, I, I can actually show you by turning this off and on again. And really, it is not a fault of material shell because they, <laughs> they do the best they can. But how it works is that you just get a big pop-up that says, click here to reactivate the application and it opens from scratch. It forgets what document you had open. And yes, maybe it manages to remember the position, but it is, sorry, it got smaller for some reason, but uh, you can see it, click anywhere to launch. Yes, it is part partially a solution, but if you have a complex uh, workspace, it means that you have some documents open and you want to open back those particular documents. You had some stuff that you were editing. Um, in Kidding Life, as an example, I could be editing a particular file. And I think that this concept really works when you are able to put that to practice, to actually open back, reboot, and be where you were, so that you can always have worksp uh, workspaces open without having to actually actively manage them all the time. Doesn't truly really work, not the a fault. Kitty Plasma also tries to boot back things up where they were. That doesn't quite work either for the very same reason. There's no common API to restore an application where it was, which is very sad. I, I think it would be necessary. Another thing that KD activities the, uh, do better compared to this is that KD activities, well, you can actually uh, put them to freeze, which doesn't close them, actually uh, saves the RAM, like puts them to hold and clears the RAM that is currently being used by that activity, which is very useful. You have a power intensive uh, workspace that you're not using, you just freeze it for a bit and then you can get back to it. But again, same problem. When you get back to it, there's sometimes uh, the applications are in the wrong places um, in case of KDE activities, or they don't open up to the same very things that we are doing previously. So very interesting concept. I totally love this. I try to replicate it as hard as possible in KDE Plasma, but I think what really makes it not work at the end, at the end is the fact that workspaces are not really able to persist through time. And that's essential, in my opinion, to this kind of uh, workflow.